Okay, hello traders. So um, today, this marks the mm -hmm. first video that, um, not, okay, not the first video, but uh, one of the few videos that uh, we are not actually on the charts. And I think it's so good to not just look at the charts because uh, trading is more than just about charts, okay? Um, so we just wanted to come out with this topic about how do you trade a small forex trading account in 2019. Okay, uh, rationale for this video is because we have a lot of uh, subscribers emailing us, asking us, you know, um, how, how big they should trade, you know, what kind of position sizing. Okay, actually, we uh, covered about the position sizing as well as the risk management in our previous video uh, in, that we have uploaded in YouTube. If you have not watched that, uh, watch that after this because that's very important. Okay, so uh, in today's video, we want to talk about the three ways uh, to trade a small forex trading account in 2019. Okay, as you can see from our PowerPoint screen over here, um, the first tip that we have for you would be to find a broker that offers micro lots. Okay, so I'm um, not too sure if you know, but normally in trading, you have three kinds of lots. Okay, one is a standard lot, which is normally a one, correct? So uh, it's like in MetaTrader, is you buy a one, position size of one. Okay, so this represents a value of 100,000 and is equivalent to about uh, $10 per pip. Of course, it depends on currencies, right? But for the majors like Euro dollar, most of the time it's, uh, it's about $10 per pip. Okay, for a micro lot, um, it actually represents a 10,000. Uh, in Meta Trader, if you are using Meta Trader, it's a 0 0.1. Okay, and it represents a $1 per pip. Okay, and micro lot, um, Okay, sorry, I missed this out. Okay, micro lot represents 0 0.01. Okay, in MetaTrader. And it represents a position size of uh, 1,000. Okay, uh, about 10 cents per pip. So uh, if you can see um, the three types of lot size, correct? If you are a new trader or you have a small Forex account, it makes sense for you to be trading a micro lot. Okay, do not trade with a broker that uh, don't, don't offer you micro lot because if let's say you have, uh, you know, you just have $500, okay, which is a comfortable amount to start with, okay, it will just take kind of like, uh, if, if you are trading a mini lot, it will just take 500 pips to wipe out your account. And that's very easy, okay. But if you are trading a micro lot, okay, it takes you about 5,000 pips in order for you to lose uh, that money, okay. So definitely make sure to look out for micro lot. Um, so let me just explain what do I mean by without micro lot, it's very hard to manage your risk, okay? Let's say your brokerage only allows you to trade um, this, correct? And you have a $500 account. Okay, let me just type. You, okay. So you are trading a $1 per pip and you have $500 account. So that means every trade is worth $1 per pip, right? If you take a you take a normal trade of a 50, 50 pip stop loss, correct? That's a 50 pip stop loss equals $50 in losses. That means you just need to take 10 trades and then your whole account is blown, okay? And if you are risking $50 per trade, 50 divided by 500 equals to a 10% risk per trade. Okay, if you watch our other videos, you know that we don't advocate you risking so much money. Okay, what we advise you to do would be to actually trade between 1% to 3%. Okay, so without the opportunity, the ability to, to trade a micro lot, it's very hard for you to manage your risk because 1% of um, $500 is like $5, right? So you, you cannot, it's like a 5 pip stop loss if you are trading mini lot and I mean, I don't know how do you have a stop loss with five pips. Either you are very good or um, I don't know. Personally, we, we, we can't even have a stop loss of five pips. It's just too, too difficult. Okay. So that sums up the first point. Okay. If you need a brokerage that offers micro lots, use our brokerage. Okay? Our brokerage, we also have, um, we also negotiated for a, a cashback bonus. That means that if you lose two, uh, $200, uh, the brokerage will refund you $200. So if you're finding $500 and your equity goes to uh, $300, the brokerage will step in to uh, restore your equity back to $500. And uh, if you're finding a thousand, it will be $100, uh, $300, sorry. Yeah, so we really negotiated this deal for you. Uh, please take advantage because we know that there's a lot of new traders and especially if you follow our signals, you make some mistakes. Sometimes you prematurely close the trade, sometimes you over trade. So we just want to make sure that you're very safe, right? With this cashback promotion, um, 
it, it kind of put a safety buffer between uh, your account and the uh, and losing money. Okay, so uh, I think I will include a link of uh, to our to to qualify for this promotion. Just use our link, fill up the documentation, and uh, you qualify for it immediately. Okay, so anyway, um, now the second point I have for you, a second tip, would be to add funds regularly when you get consistent. Okay, I think you've seen a lot of traders, you know, they both, oh, I started with a $500 account, I grew it to $1 million, I grew it to $10 million, whatever, okay? Um, that, in reality, is very, very, very difficult, okay? Because even if you grow it at, you know, a good rate of 10%, 20%, it takes very long, okay? Uh, what you want to be doing is that as you get more confident, you, you get more profitable, you're able to generate profits on a consistent basis, you regularly add funds in your account. In fact, that's something that you will automatically want to do. I mean, think of it this way. If you know that um, every month you put in $10 and you could get back $20, how much money do you want to put? I'm guessing you want to put as much money as you possibly can, correct? Because uh, you know that you can make the money. So your job as a new trader would be to slowly grow your confidence. Not just grow your trading account. I mean, that's good. But grow your confidence, right? And see, one mistake that a lot of traders make is that they start from, you know, 0 0.1, you know, and then they are making money, right? Then they just jump to two standard lots, three standard lots, okay? Um, what happens in this case is that your psychology is not strong enough, right? Because you suddenly form, you know, you're used to trading 0 0.1 and suddenly you're trading three standard lots. Okay, and when stress comes into the equation, your trading performance suffers. So take it gradual. If you need to increase your position size, maybe you start out with 0 0.1, um, maybe you are profitable for two months, you trade, increase it to 0 0.2, you know, slowly, take, take it slow. Don't jump from, you know, like, uh, as I said, 0 0.1 to two standard lots. Okay, so I've actually took, taken a look at, uh, taken two screenshots for you on the left. It shows accounts uh, that starts with $1,000. Okay, um, just, this is just a simulation. Okay, our number of periods is 36. Okay, meaning uh, you are compounding at a rate of 10% every month. Okay, if you look at the end of the period, you would have make 30,000. This is what happens if uh, you do not uh, find in any additional money. It means you just grow from 1,000. Okay. Contrast this to what is seen on the right over here. You can see that um, everything is the same except that um, in this case, you are putting $200 uh, per period. Means you are adding funds regularly. So what happens, I mean, look at the end results, okay, left and right. You can see over here that if you are investing $200 every period, you're looking at, you know, almost three times, three times the return compared to this, okay? So that's why it's very important to keep adding funds regularly, okay? But only do this when you're consistent, okay? This is a big disclaimer. Don't just, you know, um, make four trades, five trades, and you make some money, and then you get overconfident, and then you start trading big. No, no, I'm not talking about that. What I'm saying is that uh, you have consistent results for at least, you know, two months, three months consecutively, then you increase your account, you increase your position size, and you add funds in, okay? So now this is the last one that I want to focus on, would be to stay focused on the risk to reward or what is known as the R multiple. Um, so maybe let me explain what is the meaning of risk to reward. Okay, risk to reward means how much are you risking to get? Uh, how much are you risking in order to make X amount of dollars? So for example, if I'm risking $1 and my potential reward or my actual reward is $3, right? That means I have a risk reward, one is to three. Every dollar that I risk, I stand to make $3. That, that is what risk reward means, okay? Our multiple functions the same way, it's the same. If your risk is considered one, so for example, if you are risking 50 pips in this trade, then 50 pips is one R, okay? If you close that trade with a profit of 150 pips, uh, that is a reward of three R. So how did we get that? You just take one five zero hundred fifty 150 divided by 50, and that equals to three. So that's three R. Okay, so when you are trading a small account, never focus on the monetary value. Okay, uh, this is kind of uh, wrong spelling, sorry. Never focus on the dollar value. Okay, right. Why is this so? Because if you are trading a big account, let's say you have a $10,000 account, it will be very stressful. I mean, you see the numbers fluctuating, you know, it's, it's not good to put yourself in this kind of scenarios, okay? But if you also trade a small account, it also isn't meaningful. You say, oh, you know, this trade is only worth $10, uh, let's not bother much. But this is a very bad mindset, right? right? 
like say, oh, it's small. Okay, because you are building up your trading habits. Okay, you need to learn to see yourself as a, whether this is small account or big account, I, I need to be consistent. I need to trade properly. And this is one of the tripping points that we've seen a lot of uh, new aspiring traders make, right? That this is a mistake that they make. They say, oh, you know, it's just $10. So it's fine. You know, let me just try. Let me just hold on to my losses, okay? Um, it's not, you shouldn't be doing that, okay? Because uh, if you do that, you are building up a trading habit that is very hard to change, okay? So start small and start right. Do things right. Don't focus on the dollar value. In fact, think in terms of R. Okay, as we explained just now earlier. So every loss just see as, oh, it's just a one hour, right? One hour is, is you know, there is no money. Okay, you don't see it as a, you don't see, you don't see the dollar sign. Just tell yourself, okay, you know, it's just a, a one hour loss, okay? And if you gain, right, of course, uh, it depends on your trade. Is it a two hour gain, three hour gain, four hour gain? This way, when you trade a bigger account, I mean, it stays the same. Oh, my loss is still 1R, my gain is still 2R. And that keeps to help, that helps to keep your trading psychology in check. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed this lesson. So just a brief recap. Okay, number one, find a broker that offers micro lots. We'll put a link to our sponsoring brokerage at the bottom. Sign up if you have not. Okay, number two will be to add funds regularly. Okay, when you are good, disclaimer, right? When you are good. Okay, and lastly, stay focused on risk to reward on R multiples. Don't keep staring at the money, okay? It's not helping you by staring at, uh, you know, the money fluctuating up and down, okay? It's not helpful at all. Okay, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you have not hit, okay? We, we want to create more content like this to help you uh, because we understand that uh, sickness itself may not help you to become a better trader because you're just following us. So this is where um, content like this can actually change your mindset uh, and so equip you with uh, the skill set that we have to actually be a profitable independent trader. Okay, so if you have any questions, comment below, email us, right? We love to answer them, but you need to email us. Otherwise, we don't know what's going on. Okay, so we'll see you in the next